we will officially start our meeting uh, this afternoon or evening or whenever you happen to be watching. And just for those of you who don't know me, Jay Marie Jones, I'm your moderator for tonight. And uh, I know sometimes these things are not easy, but our goal tonight is to try to be as fair as we can to everyone and give you the opportunity to say your piece to the people who are going to vote in the municipal election. And just so you know, this is live on YouTube, so a number of people are watching. And it will be recorded so people can go to the, the website and watch it anytime they want. We want to say a very special thank you to Peter Rocorth, the Chamber of Commerce, who are sponsoring these events, all the townships in the county, which I think is a, a marvelous thing with the election coming up. And also Peterborough and Cortha's Home Builders Association are partnering with the Chamber to be able to present uh, these uh, candidate nights. And a lot of work, I, I've got to say, is, has gone into this. So thank you to uh, everyone for that. Now, uh, here we go. Excuse me for not having all my papers in the right place at the right time. We do respectfully acknowledge that we're on the treaty and traditional territory of the Michisaugi Anishibe, and we offer our gratitude to the First Peoples for their care for and teachings about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. So, we will be wrapping this up no later than 7 p.m., and because of the fact that we have uh, maybe half of the candidates here, it might be before that. So we're not going to stretch it out for the sake of stretching it out. As long as the discussion and everything is still healthy and good, then, then we'll keep going. Uh, we have to get out of here by 7 because another one will start at 7.30 for the township of Gavin Monaghan. Okay, we'll begin now. I've made the executive decision here. I'm going to give each candidate a minute and a half, 90 seconds, to do an opening statement. And that's up to you to say whatever you would like to the uh, electors in Havelock, Belmont, Muthoon. So you get a minute and a half. I'll also give you a minute and a half at the end of the meeting to do a wrap-up. This would perhaps give you the opportunity for any rebuttal that you might want to offer over something someone said or what have you. But that's, that's totally up to you. I'll be asking a series of questions. Some have been prepared, some have been submitted by people. So we'll try to get a good cross-section of, of questions. And I'll give each one of you, in a revolving order, uh, the opportunity to answer the questions. And you get one minute to do that. We have uh, professional timers on board, and you will see on the screen a time clock as it uh, ticks away your time and they will wave, or uh, you might even hear that when your time is up so that you can wrap it up, okay? We're trying to be as fair, as open and transparent as we possibly can. So, without further ado, we are gonna get underway with our first question. And the first person to answer the question will be Kathy Clement. Kathy, you'll be first, okay? Then the next question, uh, Shelly Miles will be first. And we'll, is, is Shelly here? Oh yeah, Shelly, we can't see her, right. Okay. Here is the first question for everyone. How do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Kathy, it's all yours. Thanks, Jay Marie. I think that if we have a new council um, with some new ideas, we will grow. We need, we need um, a small subdivision. We need a few more businesses. I moved to a small town for a reason. I, you know, I left the city for a reason. Um, I want to see us grow, but not, you know, not huge. We don't need to become a metropolis. 
Um, but I think if we work together, we can accomplish a lot of good things. I have a business background. I have an engineering background. Love construction, as you well know. And, um, and I think with those assets, everyone brings their own strengths to the council. I think we can really succeed and, and, and do amazing things. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm going to go through the first question, give everyone the chance to answer it. Then I'm going to give you your minute and a half. I should have done it the other way around, but nobody's perfect. Shelly Miles, the same question, please. How do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Um, well, thanks, um, Jay Marie. Um, I think, honestly, we need to start to develop a strategic plan. Uh, what is the actual vision of the municipality? Um, we all want growth, but like Kathy said, it has to be sustainable growth. Um, we need to ensure the protection of our, our good agricultural land. Um, so possibly develop in on unfarmable land. Um, we must have infrastructure um, to, to allow for future growth. Um, find developers and, and partner with them to build affordable housing. We need affordable housing. Um, review the bylaws to allow um, secondary suites and possibly tiny homes. Um, we really do need to focus on the small business. I, I'm not sure we have the infrastructure or the capability of, of big business um, and high-speed internet. Um, I know there's, there's programs in, in the works with EORN um, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, pretty much that's all I can add. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shelley. Ralph Horton. How do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Ralph? Uh, you're muted. Ralph, you'll have to click that little button and we all do it. Don't feel bad. Okay, I've got it now. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. I, I think um, we need to work together. We need new faces in there with new ideas and we have to look at opportunities um, if you look at a town like Norwood, Norwood has a nice new subdivision going in there. I think that's something that would work in Havelock. We have the property. Um, there's also opportunities to uh, try and grow further business in our, our uh, town of Havelock. And uh, I think we also have to get the cottagers involved too. The cottagers, uh, they all complain, but they... Um, they need to have a voice to tell us what they really want so we can make the things in our township what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Gregory Clements, how do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Go ahead. I think we need to elect a council that is able to work together to achieve um, the goals that they're put before them. The township definitely needs to develop more with business and homes and things for young families to bring them in. At the same time, you don't want to spoil the, the effects of the lakes and the, the community outside the town. You still want to maintain that also too. So these are things of growing pains to grow, but still maintain the small town feel like Lakefield, something that's attractive for tourists, people want to come to, but at the same time, you're not going into a big city effect. Thank you, Greg. Thank you but very the much. the main thing is, oh, yep. Yeah. No, that's okay. Finish your thought. I didn't want to cut you off. Oh, okay. The main thing is in this election with the people running that we have to get a, a council that will work together. And the people have to look at the people that are running and also say, you know something, these people will all gel and make good decisions on everybody out for everybody's benefit. And this is very important. Thank you very much. Jim Martin, how do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Yeah, I, I see us growing over the next four years. It's going to happen whether we like it or not. It's already happening. We've been you know, I've met with developers over the last couple of years. Um, we have two or three uh, subdivisions on in the works right now within the village. They're small, but they're uh, in the works and it takes a long time. A lot of people don't understand the planning process to get these things to happen, um, but it's gonna happen and some things are happening already. So council was preparing uh, to look at our sewage treatment plan to make sure we're ready when things start to happen. 
and uh, we have the long-term care back in the works again. We have an RFP going out for that, which is going to create, you know, huge, uh, another 128-bed uh, long-term care, and uh, um, you know, that's going to be big for our community, along with there's still uh, two quad units that we're supposed to be in on Smith Drive, which will create eight units for affordable uh, senior housing. Um, so I think as long as we get the infrastructure in place and uh, keep working the way we have been, things will be uh, happening. Okay, thank you very much. Paul Wood. Paul, go ahead. Uh, we need to develop a program, policies and activities that seek, improve, seek to improve the economic well-being and quality of life in our community. Uh, HBM has its own opportunities, challenges, and priorities that may or may not be the same as other communities in the area. We must tailor them to our needs. In other words, we have to meld the business and the residential together. They work hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. And to another point, the cottagers need to be involved and included in our plan. We have to blur the line that is dividing us right now as far as what is fair and what is not fair. And we have to listen to the cottagers because they are a big tax base for us to allow them to have a voice with council and to acknowledge them, listen to them, and take them seriously. If you do that, uh, those people uh, on our side or on council side to help us make that economic development grow. And with our new economic uh, development officer, which uh, we really appreciate to have, we can work with her to help us figure out these things in the future. Thank you very much, Paul. And last but not least, Beverly Flagler. Beverly, go ahead. Ray, could you repeat the question? Absolutely. Thank you. You've just got to let me find it again. <laughs> That's okay. How do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? How do I see the town? Well, um, I have lived here my whole life. And I have seen growth in the town and there has been growth in our community or in our township, um, the back roads, the county roads, they're all, I can see the development of the houses. Uh, what I would like to see is some places to live. It is very difficult to find a place to even rent. Um, so apartment buildings maybe, or just a few houses, um, just anything that will encourage people to come to Havelock. Um, I have all kinds of other ideas as well, um, but for the, for the main part, we do need some more businesses. Uh, we need to make George Street a viable place. And uh, again, some apartments or housing for people that want to come here and live. It's like I said, it's, uh, I talked to a lady today and she has to leave Havelock. She's lived here her whole life, um, but there just is nowhere to rent. Um, sorry, thank you. Thank you, Beverly, very much. All right. Okay, what we're going to do now is offer you your minute and a half to dress the ratepayers of your township. We're going to do it in the same order. And I would ask you each to identify yourselves by name and the seat that you are running for. So you each got a minute and a half. You don't have to take it all. There's no general rule, but no more than 90 seconds. I will start with Kathy Clement. Kathy, it's all yours. Sorry, Jay Murray, what are you asking this question? What is this one about, sorry? Uh, this is your opportunity to say what you like and introduce yourself Oh, and speak okay. to the constituents. I okay, should have that done that at the very the beginning, first, uh, but I didn't. So I'll pretend I came up with a unique way of doing got things. It. Got yeah. it, Jay Murray. That's fine. Good. Okay, so I'm Kathy Clement. I'm running for councillor at large. I retired two years ago, Bell Engineering, and I also helped my husband run our own business for 33 years in Peterborough. 
I bought a house here uh, 15 years ago, moved here full time 10 years ago. And I've always volunteered. I've always been a part of my community. I did a lot in Peterborough, Habitat for Humanity, site supervisor, um, dragon boat, that kind of thing. And with COVID, there was nothing here that I could, like I couldn't do anything during COVID. So now that I became a care, a full-time caregiver for my mom and she passed away. So now's my time to put my skills to use. I think I, I bring a lot to the, uh, will bring a lot to the council. I look outside the box and two of my last big assignments with Bell were the roundabout in Peterborough and the Campbellford, the new fire hall. And that was true teamwork. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, 90 seconds to introduce yourself, the seat you are running for, and it's all yours, Shelly Miles. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, my name is Shelly Miles, and I'm running for councillor at large. Um, I'm an experienced automotive service representative, long term volunteer, uh, and community member. Um, I love Havelock H. Uh, sorry, Havelock Belmont Methune, and I'm very proud to, of my deep roots here. Um, being a resident for 50 years, uh, I've had the pleasure to have grown along with HBM and have seen the many changes it's gone through, um, which gives me a, a, a unique per perspective. Um, I went to school here, played sports here, worked here, and volunteered here. Uh, it's my ex extensive knowledge and genuine love for this great community along with my leadership skills, compassion, and common sense that makes me the best choice to represent you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ralph Horton, 90 seconds. It's all yours, Ralph. My name is Ralph Horton. I'm running for counselor at large. Uh, I've been, I was in sales for over uh, 25 years with some major, major companies. Uh, I'm a people person. I'm highly motivated and I have great follow through skills. I'm a team player. I played hockey and baseball till, uh, till I was almost 60. So uh, I like that uh, to be part of a team. Um, and I wanna take the, the issues and the opportunities concerning the residents and cottagers of HBM and to find ways to make this a stronger community and a more enjoyable community. I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. And it's a great place to work and play. Thank you very much. Gregory Clements. Gregory. <clears throat> Greg Clements, running for the Township Board. I've been here 51 years, moved permanently here in 2016. I've had three businesses all being self-employed, very successful, and volunteered in community activities my whole life. I'm running for this position because I'm passionate about the town and the township area, and I really feel that I can make a difference in this area. I'm not running because I'm bored or I'm retired and I'm just looking for something to do or I want the extra money. I really feel I could contribute to this board with my work experience, my community service that I've done, and I've been up here for so many years and changes. I think we can enhance, make it a little bit better. Thank you. Well said. Jim Martin. It was tough, tough to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jim Martin, and I'm seeking re election as mayor of the township of Havelock, Palmont, Methuen. In 2003, I was elected to councillor at large, followed by a term as deputy mayor in 2014 which prepared me for my first term as mayor in 2018. I'd spoke about change, which would include a more transparent council, better communications and getting HBM moving forward. One thing no one could have predicted was the pandemic and dealing with the ever-changing protocols um, we faced. With everything that went on, I developed a great working relationship with both upper levels of government. I had weekly meetings with our MP and our MPP for the pandemic updates, which really helped in discussions about items our council had set as priorities. I also kept in communication with our lake associations through AGMs and virtual, virtual pandemic updates with the HBMLA rep. Mayor and deputy mayor are also responsible for representing the township of Peterborough County. And at the county, we undertook a service delivery review to try to eliminate duplication and be more efficient on how we do business. 
I work for several committees and with all the turnover happening at the county next term, my input would be beneficial to keep the knowledge and experience flowing as the programs are rolled out. I feel my leadership skills and experience will help me to keep Havelock, Belmont, Methuen and the County of Peterborough both moving uh, forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Paul Wood. Paul? Uh, are you muted, Paul? Sorry. Yeah, it's a little a little button on the microphone symbol. You're still muted. How's that? That's much better. And don't feel bad. We all do that on this <laughs> Zoom world. It's all yours, Paul. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm Paul Wood. I'm running for the uh, the, um, <laughs> the the village ward councillor position. And I uh, I own my own business uh, for 13 years. I was in the security business for 25. I was a laboratory vice a vice president for a laboratory testing facility, the world Canada's largest. Um, I've been uh, the president of a Ontario condominium corporation, a uh, member of Ajax Rotary, and president of the Ajax Scuba Club. And I'm currently uh, a member of the Celebrate Havelock Planning Committee and the Chamber of Commerce, the Havelock Chamber of Commerce. Uh, during the course of the day, I speak to numerous people about our town. The conversation also, often revolves around lack of communication and transparency. They are also frustrated with the lack of growth in the business and residential sectors of the town. I want to improve communication and give all taxpayers an opportunity to have equal say in decisions made by council. If elected, I will operate through a customer service perspective. With the help of the residents, business community, other members of council and town staff, I want to determine why our growth has stagnated. Moving forward, we need to revisit, review, and if necessary, change our strategic plan. I want to see our town thrive and keep our small town feel. We have much of the potential we just have to tap into and create something awesome. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Last but not least, Beverly. Hello, my name is Beverly Flagler and I'm running for Village Ward. Uh, this is a whole new um, job for me. Um, I know if I am elected, I will work very hard. I'm a dedicated person. I've run soccer for the past 23 years. I'm involved with the youth. And again, I just love this town. I have been out there and talking to people and uh, again, I'm just going to do the best I can for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back to our questions now. And again, remember, you each have one minute to reply. And this time we start with Shelley Miles will take the first answer. And here is the question. How should the township address the challenges residents are having in getting a family doctor? Shelley. Sorry about that. Um, well, now yeah. Quite honestly, I don't think we're gonna have a family doctor until we have recreational facilities programs, activities, arts and culture, businesses, amenities, infrastructure. I, I think we need it all. And until that, we, we really need to focus on the, the younger generation of um, businesses and entrepreneurs and families. We need to, they're the growth. And if they come, we need to, we need to find ways to keep them. Um, if we have that package, we will get doctors. They're, they're not gonna come here. There's not, what, there's not much for them. Quite honestly, I mean, I love my community, but we need we need to work on it. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph Horton. 
I, I don't know if I have an answer for that. Um, the reason being is that um, we're so small and the, like, I mean, the Dorney doctors that um, are available are in Campbellford, if you get lucky. Um, we moved up here, my wife and I, in 2016. And I've been up in this area for over 30 years, though, with cottaging and that. And I just don't have an answer to that. That's where something that, the, as a council, we would have to put our uh, heads together and see what would be um, a way to go, especially maybe if we contact Peterborough and work with their, their health, uh, health center. Thank you. Thank you. Greg. That's actually, that's actually a very tough one to answer also because they need to work on the infrastructure and promoting the town. The town has to be attractive and appealable for people to want to come here and stay for businesses and doctors and everybody else. I moved up here in 2016. I was fortunate. I got a doctor right away in Marmara, but a lot of people don't. But in order to get that process going, we have to do a lot of other things first before we even get to that stage of promoting the town and making it look prosperous and growing more. So it has to be attractive. It, it's got to be a, a process that is going to take a while to work on with the right people working behind it. Thank you. Jim Martin. Okay, and I'm glad to hear everybody's answers here and everybody realized that's a really tough question. Um, we've been working on it for years to try and get a doctor and it's, it's actually countrywide is a problem to get doctors, whether it's a big city, a small town. Um, we have to do what we can to attract somebody that wants to be here like we do. We love, we love Havelock, Belmont, Methuen, and we're happy to be here. And hopefully one day we're going to find a doctor that maybe wants to settle down here and help us out and uh, maybe have a small practice here just to uh, um, keep up on things. So I think if we make it inviting here, um, the long-term care is going to really help once it comes because there'll be more need for them as far as uh, an institution like that. But uh, I think we just got to keep doing what we're doing um, and hopefully we attract somebody that wants to come here like many and, uh, and settle and help us out with something like that. So. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Jim. Paul Wood. Yeah, that is a tough one. <laughs> I still go to Ajax for my doctor. Um, problem is, in order to have a doctor, you gotta, he has to have patients. And in order to get patients, we have to have residences. So we have to improve the way we attract business. We attract business, we attract residences, and we also need to have uh, things for people to do. So they need to work, live, and play in Havelock. And once we accomplish that, we will have more people, and that may attract the doctors who come to town and set up a practice. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Beverly. Hi, that is a tough question. Um, we did have doctors here in Havelock. And I believe that there is a doctor out there somewhere that will love Havelock. Uh, we do have some amenities. Um, you know, we have soccer, we have baseball, we have a tennis court, uh, and we should look into other things that might attract um, a doctor. Or, I don't know, I just don't think we should give up on it, and I think we should just keep trying. Thank you, Beverly. You're welcome. Kathy. Thanks, Jay Murray. Um, okay, I'm very, very realistic as anyone who knows me. Um, part of this is the next level of government. They control by handing out the money, the training. We desperately need, when we get our whole long-term care, we're gonna need PSWs. There will probably be a doctor somewhere on call because I had just had my mom in, in a nursing home. So yes, it's not, it's not the town that's the, the deterrent. It's the next level of government. We need money for training to bring nurses in, to bring doctors in. So, you know, it's, it's wish for all of us. We all know it's a tough one, but I think it's the next level of government that we're really going to have to work with to get some money, get some training, and some doctors here. That's just my thought. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Ralph Horton, you will be 
the first to answer the next question. And I'll use one of the questions that has been submitted to us. Data from the 2021 Census of Agriculture shows Ontario is losing 319 acres of farmland daily. This is land that will never produce food once it's been paved over. What is your policy on developing agricultural land to help preserve food production for future generations in this county and in this country? Ralph? Uh, there's, it's another question I don't have an answer for. Um, I think uh, we need something to be able to attract the farmer to, to grow his business here. And maybe um, if we uh, go to the provincial government or we go through the, the county of Peterborough and work with that to get some farmers help to increase their business. But um, I think we all know that farmland is shrinking all the time because there's either the multi farms or there's the small farmer. And that's the way it is. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And, and I do remind everyone, I know some of these questions are tough for anyone to answer, but I, I guess all we're trying to do now with this session is, is introduce you and get a, a discussion going and, and bring these uh, subjects up to the front. So I know it can be difficult, but we're certainly doing a good job. No, no question about that. Uh, Gregory. Okay, could you repeat the question again, please? Data from the 2021 Census of Agriculture shows Ontario is losing 319 acres of farmland every day. This is land that will never produce food once it's been paved over. What's your policy on developing agricultural land to help preserve the production of food? for future generations in the county and in the country for that matter. I really think that farmers need more, more incentive and more breaks when it comes to running a farm and producing um, farm goods for everybody to use. Unfortunately, we as a generation now are too used to buying everything that's coming from overseas and we should be trying to promote our own goods that are grown here that we're eating our own stuff. It's not stuff that comes from China or anywhere else. The farmers definitely need a break. They need to be given lots of incentive and tax breaks and help in that area. Also, with the development of land, it really has to be planned out well where subdivisions go or houses or anything else. And that's just farmland just isn't sold off for the sake of selling it off and putting a house there. It needs to be really planned out in a geographical sense. Thank you very much. Jim Martin. Yeah, so, you know, at the county, we have the agricultural committee there and uh, it's represented well. And I think we need to do that at the township level too. And we need to work with our farmers and not take them for granted. Um, you know, it's a business that they're running and it's one of the, like every business, they're getting squeezed right now. And we have to do what we can to, uh, to make them feel wanted and make them uh, and help them with the other levels of government to, uh, to help support them because uh, we do our buy local campaigns, we do the farmer's market, we do those types of things to promote local um, things going on. But uh, our farmers is something that we got to quit taking for granted and start working with them um, moving forward. And, uh, um, you know, we've done that in Havelock, Belmont, Methuen. We're not maybe a lot of agriculture land, but we do, we went through this a few years ago to try and uh, make people understand that it's not necessarily the fields where you're growing things, there's grazing, there's, there's fields that we have that are so important to our farmers to, uh, to have there to be able to use uh, for their livestock. So um, we just gotta keep working on it and don't shut them out, let's uh, work together. That's the whole thing with everything. Okay, thank you, Jim. Paul Wood, go ahead. Well, farming is a tough job and that's why it's handed down in the families from the father to the son and hopefully that the son takes up the, the job of farming the land. Sometimes that doesn't happen and the farm can't survive. We have to encourage the farmers to keep on going. We have to 
try to get them incentives from other levels of government. And we need to buy local to support our farmers the best that we can, we can and not to push them aside and support them and give them all the support we can. Thank you. Beverly. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> support. I sure can. Data from the 2021 Census of Agriculture shows Ontario is losing 319 acres of farmland every day. This is land that will never produce food once it's been paved over. What is your policy or ideas on developing agricultural lands to help preserve uh, food production for future generations? Um, well, my ideas on that would be, we do have to support our farmers, our local farmers. Um, I myself, when I go to a grocery store, I will buy something from Ontario and not so much in Argentina. I do watch uh, on the countries that I do buy from and I do try and stick to uh, the local farmers. I do support them in anything that they uh, wish to do. And I would hope that their concerns would be brought forth to council and we could come up with some sort of solution that would uh, help them in any way. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Kathy. Thank you. You're looking at a farm kid. I grew up on a farm. I belonged to 4-H when I was growing up. And one of the good things about being part of the local farmer's market, I see people coming, buying locally, talking to our local vendors, the stories, how hard they work. Um, I don't like seeing farmland used up for development for subdivisions. Let's pick and choose where we're going to farm and where we're going to have our, our other amenities. Um, and yes, and we do need to promote and, and offer things to our farmers, some incentives um, and the ones that we have, let's, let's help them. Um, and as I said, like I, I'd be glad to see everyone at our local farmer's market. We're there every Friday and I'm big on promoting the farmer's markets and shop locally. Thank you. Great, thank you. Shelly. Um, so yeah, everyone's pretty much said it all. Um, we need to, I think we need to put policies in place to maintain the usage of farmland for anything other than farm. Um, we need, we need to sustain that. We need to be sustainable here. I would like actually to see um, almost a food alliance in, in the community when we could work with different farms and, and, and feed our community, keep it local, either that or a community owned food co-op. That would be awesome where, you know, the, the owners are actually members of the community. Um, I would like to promote incentives, obviously, um, but we need to find funding for them, help them find funding either through grant assistance or whatnot. Uh, I'd also like to see greenhouses, um, more greenhouses in the area, which would promote uh, four season crops. And again, keep it local, support local campaigns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Gregory Clements will be first to answer the next question. And we're pleased to have a question that is submitted through one of our viewers. And I will read that question. Stand by, Gregory. This comes from Colin. 90% of aquatic life is born and raised in the 10 meters of water closest to the shoreline. How will you protect these delicate ego zones, ensuring our lakes remain healthy? Gregory? That's really a tough one. And you know something? Everybody talks about maintaining the water and keeping it clean and, and washing boats when you're going in and going out. Um, until we actually get to the point where we can set up some sort of a program to monitor this. It's, it's a really tough one to answer. And I don't have the answer for that. Unfortunately, I live on the lake and I want it to be as clean as possible for sure. Absolutely. I think it's better than what it used to be. I think people are more conscious 
of pollution and taking care of aquatic life and stuff like that. So I, I do think it has moved forward with the knowledge and, and the education that's out there, but we need to go a lot further. And these areas have to be explored more in depth. Thank you very much. Jim Martin. Yeah, I think it's something uh... With, when it goes to the shoreline preservation and things like that for this uh, this item, it's uh, something I think we're behind the eight ball right now. Uh, we should have started a long time ago. Um, this last budget that our council did, we did put an environmental grant out there for the Lake Association to access to try and um, explore some of these uh, invasive species that are happening or going on in old lakes. And uh, there has been some talk about boat wash stations and things like that. I'm not sure how much that's gonna help, but I think it's everything like that that needs to be looked at as we move forward. And we need to do it quickly. Um, it's something that we can't keep talking about. We need to uh, get on it. And I think uh, hopefully this grant with the associations, one, one lake has already taken advantage of it and has had uh, um, oh, Trent University on the lake uh, looking at some weeds that are happening up there. And uh, that flows right through all the rest of the lake. So hopefully it helps and uh, we can get on to this sooner than later. Thank you, Jim. Paul Wood. As a scuba diver, I know exactly what they're talking about. I've seen invasive species through my diving career. And uh, one of them is the zebra mussel, and it's very, very prominent in some of the lakes up here. Um, boat washing station, Sandos Lake has already instituted a washing station that they got a grant for. Um, there, that's a doable thing to do. It's going to cost money, but we need to protect our lakes from the base uh, species. Um, whether it's weeds or zebra mussels or other aquatic life, we're soon, if they allow them to be predominant in the lake, no, there ain't, isn't going to be any more fish for fishermen to fish. So we need to do something about it. And uh, also involves septic tank inspection because what's the last thing you want is a septic tank leaking into the lake. So we, we may have to look at that in order to um, uh, mitigate any problems in, in, in the lake. Thank you. I gotta, I've got to commend all of you for being on time and not going over this little timer. It's very, makes my job a lot easier. Beverly. Hi. Uh, yes, we do need to protect our lakes, uh, shorelines, um, the weeds, the mussels. We need to protect our wildlife. Um, so I think uh, maybe some education, uh, big signs, you know, to remind people. I think probably 95% of boat owners do wash their motors. Uh, so we're going to try and target the ones that are not. Um, or that don't care about the lakes. Um, but I think we can do it um, with, like I said, education, you know, cleaning your boats um, and just overall maintaining our waters. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so quick on these ones. Oh, no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> uh, Kathy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was just reading a thing on fan work, the algae, and it's into one of the rivers and now in one of our local lakes. It's, it, this is a problem that's been ongoing, I do believe, and I, I'm with a lot of them. Education is a, a big thing. You need to teach people. Uh, years ago, we had a boat. I took the boating course. We always cleaned our boat. We made sure we didn't dump anything back into the lakes. You need to be really educating the public. And then I think as counselors, we really need to be working with the lake associations and there's a group called FOCA that we need to be dealing with. There's things that we can be doing, but education is probably at the top of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. Shelly. <laughs> there's really not much to add here, um, but I agree. The protection of our lakes uh, from invasive species or shoreline preservation should be priority. And I support the idea of of um, implementing a decontamination program if we need to do that. But we need to consider all lakes and find a way to, to, to do that. Um, again, like everyone said, signage, increased awareness. Um, 
and proved improved signage at all the pool launches. They're per, they're pretty small. Like I visited them, and there, some of them are hard to find. So I think that needs to be uh, increased. Um, maybe looking at some uh, equipment, uh, underwater uh, cutting equipment. Maybe we could support that or find a fundraising campaign, something. Um, but it's it's very important. And I also believe they should take advantage of that grant. And, uh, and and have some education programs and, and awareness events. Thank you. Thank you. And Rolf. Uh, I think um, cottage associations, we should be uh, educating everyone on the lakes. We've got a lot of new cottagers in the last little while um, to educate um, what the effects are when they do things like bring boats in from outside or throw stuff in the lake around their cottage and so forth. We need to educate them that this is what's causing a lot of the stuff. The other thing is, is I'm a big um, believer that set the septic systems with, uh, especially around our lakes, are a lot of them, there are some problems with them and we have nobody following up on any of that. And that um, refuge is being leaked back into our lakes, which is also harming what's going on. So I really feel that there needs to be somebody putting in um, the effort to get somebody going to these lakes to monitor what the septic system is working on each of them. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Martin will have the opportunity to answer the next question first. And the question is a short one. What are your infrastructure priorities for your township? Well, we have the uh, ongoing, the, the biggest thing was uh, George Street within the village and, and that's finally happening. And I wanna make sure it does happen. It's supposed to start in uh, May and uh, we're gonna have to keep pushing that to, it's the first phase of a three phase uh, project and it's a huge cost, but it's long overdue. Um, when we talk about growth and housing, the other thing that council had set as a priority was our, our uh, sewage treatment plant upgrades, and that's in the works too. And I want to make sure all these things are, are followed through with. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is uh, um, trying to get our roads in shape, um, our, all of our infrastructure. We've done well on roads within the village with grants from the provincial government for water and sewer projects. And we got to continue that, continue getting these grants. That's the only way we can do these projects. We're too small a municipality to try and pay for these things on our own. So uh, um, I think we'll just keep working on that and uh, and get all of these things done. So. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Paul. Uh, this may sound a little repetitive, but um, securing grants from the provincial and federal government to, to for infrastructure really important for us to do. Um, at the upgrade of the sewage treatment plant because I can see in the future that we're going to grow and we need to up, we have to upgrade that sewage plant in order to take on the uh, future growth. Um, there's an upgrade to the community center happening. Um, that's great news to accommodate more participation in the activities that the town needs to see. Um, and the reconstruction of George Street is happening, which is a great news. Starts in May, I believe, or in the spring, in a three-phase program. First phase is something that we um, have to is starting, but the second and third phase, the council that's going to be in is going to have to address all the situations and all the things that uh, have to do with a reconstruction of a road. So we're going to be busy. And, um, and it's good news for a lot of infrastructure plans. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Beverly. Hi. I'm glad to hear, Jim, that uh, George Street is finally a go, that we are going to get that, um, at least some of it, uh, going. Um, I really don't have anything else to say because I feel the township that we, well, who's on council now is doing a good job. I think we just need to keep going and keep going forward, not backwards, and um, do it in a timely manner. 
Um, it shouldn't take 15, 20 years to complete one project. So again, way to go, Jim, because <laughs> George Street people are ready for their road. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Beverly. Kathy. Thank you. I know firsthand, um, I did a job and there's a manhole at the corner of Mary and George and it's quite congested down there. There's a lot to what we don't see underground with your conduit and your manholes and your infrastructure. So I too am glad to see that our current council has got the go ahead for George Street. Um, the other thing I think we need to work on, it's, it's not our level of government. We do need to go above, but we really do need to look at a light at number seven in Mary Street. But again, that's not us. We're gonna to have to work with the people above us, but we can do it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Shelly? Sorry, uh, I, uh, like everyone else, I'm very thankful that we're moving forward with George Street and uh, we need to make sure that's completed. Um, I guess sidewalks, we need to focus on that. I'd also like to see um, Round Lake Road. We need to do something. I know there's they're talking about something on the sides, but that, that there's nowhere for people to walk and people are constantly walking on that road. I find it dangerous. Um, yeah, water, sewer, we need to make sure that is um, available for growth. Um, so when we do develop, everything is ready to go. Um, and water quality, obviously we need to work with that. Um, but yeah, transparency, anything that's going on, we need to be transparent and efficient. Thank you. Thank you. Ralph. Yes, for the infrastructure, I'm glad to hear that George Street's happening. I mean, I, that does not give a good impression of Havelock if someone new comes into town and sees that. They think, that, you know, that nobody's doing their job to make the community better. Um, and I also think we should use the available land and try and get people involved in building something or that, you know, there used to be a hotel in the middle of town on Highway 7. That land's been sitting vacant for a very long time. I'm sure we could find some great uses or get um, someone involved to put something in there that would really enhance the image of Havelock. Thank you. <clears throat> no, I'm waiting for Jim Marie. Go ahead. Sorry, I was muted, so don't feel bad. There you go. Uh, Gregory. Okay, so it sounds to me like the town in itself is being well taken care of and things are well in the works for getting the necessary items addressed thanks to Jim and the previous team. But I also think with the infrastructure, we should be looking at some of the outlying areas also, which seems to be forgotten lots of times, that the roads that are maintained outside of the town area, the township ward, are accessible for emergency vehicles, fire engines, um, ambulances that to get down there to people that live full time in the remote areas. And that should be addressed also because outside of the town, sometimes they're forgotten. And you know something, they contribute to the town as much as anybody. So the emergency vehicles and, and the, the accessories that go along with it, should be maintained that there's access for people to have those. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I believe we're caught up now and we're gonna to go to our, now what we're going to do, I'm going to have two more questions, okay? Two more, and then I'll give you all the opportunity to take your 90 seconds to address everyone with the words of your choice, okay? So we'll probably end a wee bit early, but uh, uh, I think you kind of know when, when things have been talked to. So Paul Wood will be our leader this time. And here's another submitted question for you. How will you support and advocate for a municipal system that would remove zoning barriers to affordable housing 
and streamline the development process for nonprofit entities and the building community. We'll go with Paul. I would support the making it easier for those developments to be installed in the community. To cut some red tape so the developer does not have to jump through hoops in order to get permits. Saying that all rules and regulations need to be followed as far as building permits and engineering, architecture, things like that. So we, we need to make it easier to make homes more affordable for people that need to be have homes that are affordable. So the more we can do for them, um, the better we're off as far as having more residences, stuff, more business in town. Thank you. Beverly. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I wasn't ready to be next. <laughs> no, I sure can. Not to worry. How will you support and advocate for a municipal system that would remove zoning barriers to affordable housing and streamline the development process for nonprofit entities and the building community? Wow. Um, I will support um, housing and, oh, I'm sorry, I've just lost my words. Um, I can support the, the housing, um, but I think we need to not only support our housing for affordable, like for affordable housing, but we need to um, get some housing for people that want to come here and live. Um, I get that there are people that are, there are youth that can't afford right now to buy a home or rent. Um, so I would definitely support housing for that. And again, we need growth. We need, we just need a lot of stuff here in Havelock. I don't know why, but we do. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Beverly. Kathy. Okay, so in my previous job, I had to deal with the municipalities, the MTOs. We always had to get municipal consents for, for a lot of the stuff that I drafted. There is always going to be some um, zoning problems, but I do think that we can cut through some of the red tape. We can make the steps easier. If there's 10, maybe we can make it five. Um, there's always going to be the zoning issues, but we need to work with it and around it or whatever, and we need to work as a team to accomplish that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shelley. Well, I think uh, recent improvements with the implementation of the cloud permit is, is going to move things along nicely. Um, but we, we, the council needs to continue to work to streamline processes, um, but do it sustainably. Um, we do, like I said, we need to protect farmland. Uh, council needs to be transparent with and, and, and include the public before decisions are made, not after, um, and review ex existing bylaws um, to allow this possibly um, working with organizations um, to bring them in to the community. And we need to be open to them. Thank you. Thank you. Ralph. Um, we need to um, put a program together. We really need to uh, do as a council is come up with a way to make it um, affordable and easier through the systems for the builders to come in and build something. I'm not a big fan of nonprofit housing. The reason is, is you put apartment building or even townhouses in that, I think you're setting the wrong state to make the, the town go um, in the right direction. Um, so, if we can find the ways to provide the land and get the builders interested in this community, I think we could have a really, really good growth of new housing. Thank you very much. Gregory. <clears throat> Affordable housing, it's a great thing. Everybody needs it for all different levels of income. It's great to build affordable housing and make them, make them attractive 
and appealing to people. We don't want to get into a situation where, where the whole town is just all affordable housing. It has to be a good mix of, of both. Also, it has to, you also have to work with the contractors to make it easier to get building permits because it's really tough to get that to go through right now. And if you're going to do affordable housing and this sort of thing, you have to bring in a property standards act so that the properties are maintained to a certain level so that everything is always attractive and not being run down and falling down with the way certain people live. So a property standards act would be a, a big thing to bring in also with this so that you can maintain an attractive community. You just don't want to be Havelock. Havelock doesn't want to be just all affordable housing. It has to be a mix and a balance. Thank you. Jim Martin. Yeah, Greg's right about the balance. And I think uh, we did a good job working with Peterborough County, uh, Peterborough Housing with the development on Smith Drive. That's an affordable seniors building, which is beautiful. Um, we had to go through a lot of red tape and zoning and issues like that, that we worked with the county and our planners to make that happen. The land was Havelock Belmont Methuen's land. Uh, we serviced it and provided it to Peterborough Housing. And I think that was a good model to use in the future for, we don't want all affordable housing, but any that come forward, um, we can use that um, to, to work on any future projects. And uh, um, planning's a tough thing and, and zoning, like we're pretty far down the list. It's, you know, you're working under a provincial uh, policy statement and it goes right down the list that it's down near the bottom when it gets to the municipality, but there is things we can do to cut the red tape and try and make things happen. And, and I think that's what we need to do as a group. Uh, you gotta work together and make things happen and we can do that. Thank you. Uh, did I get through my list? Paul, we've had you. Yes. Yes. I've got so many marks on my page here. You have no idea how complicated this can be. We have one more question for the night then I will allow each of you for your 90 second summary and, and then we'll say good night. So Beverly, you are selected as the first person to answer this question. A very simple one. What transportation needs does the township need to address? Transportation needs. Beverly, it's all yours. Um, our transportation needs, um... I think we could do kind of like a bus stop down George if we did it once a week, had a time 10 to 2, the people that want it to be, you know, taken down to the grocery store or the drug store or whatever um, could sign up for it, of course, um, because if, if there is no need for the transportation, um, then... I guess we wouldn't do it. Um, um, sidewalks are an issue. Um, uh, some wheelchairs, they're kind of bumpy on George. Um, there are a few other areas that's a little sticky. Um, I would like to look into that. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kathy. Well, as a past commuter, I'd love to see Via Rail come back in. I think Jim's working on that or has tried. Um, and I know the last time I ran, there was talk of not necessarily a bus locally, but the bus to go to Peterborough or a bus to go to Campbellford, just an option to go get something different or whatever. Um, but Via Rail is my, I used to use it. I loved riding it. So anyways, I think, because we're right on a main artery. We've got number seven highway. So we need to look after the local, but if we have some commuters here, um, you know, because people are working more from home all the time, then they've got that option of the train back into Toronto for meetings like I used to go to. So I think that's that would be amazing. But anyways, thank you. Thank you. Shelley. Um, yeah, pretty much everything that's going on. Of course, we need bus transportation to Peterborough. Um, the Via Rail would be wonderful. Um, Although community care does provide tra transportation services in, in the community for um, seniors um, and others, I believe, uh, we really do need affordable transportation somehow. 
traffic calming on some of the streets in the village um, would be wonderful. I don't know of ways we can do that, but we need to look at that. And on some of the side roads, um, winter maintenance on Highway 7, I, I think that needs to be improved. I know that's not us, but we need to work on, on, on improvements. Um, yeah, I do know that Calba Food actually opened something recently, and I'm not sure what it entails, but it was a mobile unit that goes from Coburg to Port Her or Warkworth, uh, Port Hope, that that way into the city. And I think that's something that maybe could be looked on if we um, if we ever get the growth that we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ralph. Yes, um, I think it would be. We, there used to be a bus that used to go through Havelock. I think it would be uh, really good if we could work with um, the other towns like Tweed and Madoc and Marmara and Havelock and Norwood and have a bus that would take you to Campbellford or take you to um, Peterborough. And that would also be great for someone that worked, that lived here and worked in Peterborough is that this, it would make this uh, community more attractive to them too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gregory. Kathy and Ralph are both right. Cause I remember years ago, there was a via rail that used to take you right from here, right downtown Toronto for 10 bucks. And also there used to be the Greyhound bus. It would go from Ottawa, stop right by the old hotel, pick up and take you to Peterborough and Toronto. I don't know if that's a provincial level that you have to work with or um, a private level, but it would be nice to try to reinstate those services because they were actually great services and they were used. I know we used them all the time. So unfortunately they've been put by the wayside. I know they're working on the via rail thing. Maybe um, Dave Smith is somebody you talk to more about getting these things going because there's definitely gonna service the area and help people get around more quickly. The community care takes care of get, getting people around quite well. And we have the, the taxi thing that's working in town too, deal taxi for individual use. But uh, I think you need more of the via and the buses to go from one direction back into Peterborough, Toronto, or up to Ottawa, and in, in Belleville, these areas. And it's uh, a service thing that have to be explored with the bus companies, I would imagine. Thank you very much. Jim Martin. Yeah, so that's there's three pieces to this. And the first piece on the local side of things, I know the mayor in Norwood and myself have been looking at the model that Selwyn's using to try and get something to get between here and Peterborough. Um, and, you know, it's kind of kind of stalled right now, but we're still working on it through uh, with the city. Um, the other side of it is with the provincial government and the federal government. Um, the federal government is the VIA side of it. And I honestly thought by the end of this term, we would have had the VIA to have lock. Um, we we're working on it so hard and, and I just, I'm gonna blame COVID and. Um, all this two years of nonsense that uh, we need to uh, get back on the track and get it happening. Um, and then on the provincial side of things, uh, Dave Smith has been talking about a, um, a Go Bus Express that would come all the way to Havelock and it would go all the way back to Peterborough and the Trent University thing. So uh, um, that would be a benefit for all of us since the Greyhound's gone, we need some busing on Highway 7 back. And uh, I think it'll happen. I, I'm an optimistic person and I like to think positive. So um, I think these things will happen in the next couple of years. And you're right, Jim, we do have to get on track. We, d we didn't miss your little line there. That's good. Thank you. Uh, Paul, final word. Uh, yeah, we need to reestablish the busing along Highway 7 for sure from Havelock to Peterborough or even going back out to uh, Marmara and then Havelock and Peterborough. Uh, if we want to attract people here, we need to have the transportation to uh, get them from here to there. The Via Rail, 100%, um, it would bring more people to see Havelock from Ottawa to Toronto. Um, we could actually use that as a a way to attract business because those people may get off at Havelock and spend their money in town and um, and then carry on to Toronto. But we have to have the things for them here to spend their money on. Um, 
So that's the via rail and the bus line, 100%. Busing inside the town, not sure. Um, that is something I, I'd have to investigate and think about. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Well, we're at that time of the night when we're going to be wrapping up now. And everyone would be entitled to 90 seconds to say what you'd like to say. Uh, certainly don't feel obligated to use the whole 90 seconds if you choose not to. It's it's uh, totally up to you to uh, say what you'd like. And this is the wrap-up session. Then we'll be done for the night. I'm going to start with Kathy. Go ahead. Thank you. So I think so far, I think our existing council, we do have to give them some credit. They have, they've done amazing, they've done some really good things. They're working on them. It'll be up to the next council to follow through. And you need a good group of people to work together, sometimes look outside the box, but make it happen. And, and I hope I'm part of it. Um, if not, I wish everyone else best of luck. And, um, and here's the good things for Havelock. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Shelley. Well, thank you. Um, so I guess I'm going to say this. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm a community member. I'm probably the furthest thing to a politician you'll ever meet. Um, I'm not going to make promises I can't keep or tell you everything you want to hear. I will commit to working hard, um, learning as much as I can, listening, and asking a whole lot of questions. Um, I'll put myself forward to represent you as a strong voice that will support our community, its members, at local businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, I'll dedicate myself to promoting financial responsibility and work to build a, an accessible, sustainable community um, that works for everyone. Um, this election is about you, your ideas, your concerns, your voice. Uh, October 24th, let me be your choice for change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ralph. Uh, this is a great opportunity at this time for uh, the Havelock Belmont Methuen Township to go forward. Um, we've really, we've got two people, well, we've got one person returning and uh, Jim Martin is hoping that he'll be back with us too. We are, we are too. Um, but the thing is, is there's a lot of new people here. Um, I really feel that's gonna be good for this community. Um, myself, I've been very successful in business I'm a people person, a good negotiator. I'm highly motivated and I have great follow through skills. And I take this opportunity very seriously. And I really want to be part of making this community a great place to work and play. I've been part of this community for over 30 years. I've had a cottage on Cordova. Now I've got a cottage or a home on Belmont. So I've been coming here for over 30 years. And I want to take the issues and the opportunities concerning the residents and cottages of the HBM Township and find the solutions to make this a safe, equitable, fair community that all residents and cottage owners want to be a member of. Thank you. Thank you. Gregory. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to talk about myself because I've posted something in the Havelock Rail about my bio already. But what I want to say to the voters out there that this is a great time for change because that's all I've heard over the last year or so. We need to change, we need to change. We have a lot of good people running here. Uh, a lot of people that have been very successful in business and have done very well in their achievements in life. And that's what the voters need to look at. They need to look at people, uh, what their background is, what they've achieved and accomplished in their life and then think to themselves, what will that person accomplish for me? If you've got somebody that's been accomplished in his life and a doer, maybe that's a person that you want to have with you on your council. And the other thing that you, when people are voting for people on council, don't look at so-and-so because, oh, he's my neighbor or I've known him for 30 years or whatever. Look at what they've done and look to see how they will gel with the other people that are running to make sure that we get a council in there that can work together and accomplish things. We can't have a council in there where everybody's at odds, different backgrounds. We need people that are doers and people that want to accomplish things and move forward. So that's a very important 
aspect of this election that I think people should look at. Thank you very much. Jim Martin. Yeah, okay. And closing here, I want to thank the Peterborough Chamber um, for doing this and letting us get our voice out there. It's really important for us to be heard. And I want to thank all the candidates here who uh, put their names forward. This is uh, really good, and uh, I wish you good luck. When someone signs up for council, it's a real commitment. Um, and once again, before I signed up, I received full support from my family, which is really important to me because it's a family commitment. As challenging as this term was with all the unknowns thrown my way, I feel it's further prepared me to lead and be a conduit of experience for such a new council and will be your voice at both the township and the county. And for another four years, I'll be committed to continue to keeping Havelock, Belmont, Methuen moving forward. I'm really a proactive thinker. I'm not reactive. So um, we're going to have a lot of challenging times ahead of us with a lot of unknowns. And it will be, it'll take a team effort with the community and the council working together to promote HBM as a great place to live, work, and do business. Make sure everybody votes. That's my biggest concern moving forward here is people get out and vote. And on October 21st, I, 24th, I hope to be reelected as your mayor of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen. So thank you and thank you everyone for tonight. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Paul. Well, first of all, I'm really excited about serving as a councillor for this town. Um, I thought pretty long and hard about it, and um, I'm ready to go. If I am elected to represent the people of the village of HBM, I will also be actively involved in council for the whole of the community. I will be there to support the other members of council to find answers to your questions and concerns. I will seriously listen, encourage you to bring your ideas and recommended solutions, and I will keep you informed of Council's progress. As taxpayers and members of the community, you are the customers and I am there to serve you. I will work hard to provide the best service possible. I believe change is in order. We need to change our priorities to be more progressive and facilitate growth through economic development. We need to develop programs, policies, and activities that seek to improve the economic well-being of the and quality of life in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Last and certainly not least, Beverly, go ahead. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, I would like to say that I love this township. And if elected, I am going to listen to my voters. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to work together with everyone and uh, hopefully achieve goals that we can all live with. And um, so far, I've met a lot of great people and this community can come together and we can get through just about anything. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Havelock, Belmont, Methuen, a wonderful township. And I can, I can sense right through the computer screen the passion and the love you have for your community, each and every one of you. And you should all be congratulated for putting your name forward. It is not an easy task. And uh, I think each and every one of you have done a, a wonderful, wonderful job. We hope all the voters in the township Get out and vote. Please don't sit back and let someone else vote. Exercise your right. If you need information, please contact your township office. That is going to be it for our candidate night here in Havelock, Belmont, Methuen. I want to thank the Peterborough Kawartha Chamber of Commerce for all the work it took to sponsor this event and put it together and our timekeepers and, and Joel who coordinated this and the Kortho Home Builders Association as well for their partnership. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed meeting each and every one of you and I wish you all the very, very best in the upcoming election. Thank you all very much. Good night.